Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Sports Outlet. I'm your host, Jess Ganga, and today we're talking TCNJ Sports, where we'll have a special interview with a student athlete. After, our analysts will be discussing the NHL, NHL playoffs. Let's get to it. Both men's and women's tennis have had fairly good seasons this spring. The women's team wrapped up their season on April 13th, finishing off at 12 and 4 on the season. On the men's side, they wrap up their season this week on April 27th against Kutztown University. The team is currently 9 and 6 on the season. The men recently broke a four-game win streak with a loss against Stevens Institute of Technology on Monday, April 25th. Both teams are moving forward to the NCAA playoffs in May and look to take home a Division III title for the College of New Jersey. Moving from the tennis court to the baseball field, TCNJ's baseball team has had an exceptional 2016 season. The men are 26 and 6 and have had multiple win streaks throughout the season. They recently snapped their win streak with a doubleheader loss against Ramapo College, but look to improve their overall record against Kern, Uni Kern University on Tuesday, April 26. The team has had standout performances up and down the lineup. Last week against Rutgers University Camden, senior outfielder Patrick Roberts surpassed the 100 RBI mark earning himself his 102nd RBI of his career, and he currently has 105 career R RBIs. The defensive side has been in the spotlight as well. Many pitchers have, ha have gone through the season without any losses. Sophomore pitcher Brandon Zachary has started in six games and has walked off with a win in each one. Turning to women's sports, the softball team has had a shaky season but are still doing well with an overall record of 22 and 13. Last week, the women defeated Keene University, a New, Jer New Jersey athletic conference team, in a doubleheader. In the first game, the women won 3 to 2 in the after in the afternoon, the women shut out Keene 2 to 0. Like baseball, the women have had great performances by the players. Last week, freshman pitcher Sarah Biamovich earned herself rookie pitcher on the NJAX Weekly Players of the Week list. Chan changing locations once more, this time to the track fields, the men's and women's track teams have dominating performances by many members of the team. Last week, at the Widener Outdoor Invitational, seniors Laren Day and Michael Larkin finished first and second, respectively, out of 37 competitors in the 400-meter hurdles. The men are getting in personal record shape for the end of the season. For the women, success has been met as well. In the Widener Invitational, freshman Maddie Trattori earned herself second place out of 64 runners in the 5,000-meter race. We're going to take a quick break, but when we get back, Trattori will be here to answer some questions. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm joined here by Maddie Trattori, a freshman distance runner. Um, welcome, Maddie. Um, as a freshman, this was your first season as a Lion. How was your first season at TCNJ? Um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was actually three seasons because um, distance runners, we run cross country in the fall indoor in the um, winter and outdoor track in the spring. So it's been a long year, but it's definitely been a lot of fun. Um, were there any meets or invitationals that stand out to you? Did you have a particular performance by yourself that stands out? Um, hmm, that's a hard one. I guess <laughs> what would stand out to me would be our regional meet this okay. year, where we compete against all the teams in our region. And it really stood out to me just because I remembered how loud it was yeah. at the race. It, there were so many people there, and a lot of teammates who weren't running in the race came mm -hmm. up and watched us all, so it was a lot of fun. Sounds like it was very exciting. Yeah. Uh, what is a typical practice schedule like, and how do you prepare for meets beforehand? Um, our typical practice schedule, we have a long run on Sunday, mm -hmm. which can be anywhere from like 10 to 13 miles. Wow. Um, and then throughout the week, we have two workouts where mm -hmm. we'll do speed work, either on the track or on a towpath near here and then the rest of the days of the week are mostly distance runs which are like anywhere from six to eight miles depending on the person. Sounds like a lot. <laughs> uh, how is the team preparing for the NJAX? Um, well right now we're two weeks away from NJAX mm -hmm. so our main goal now is we're cutting back on our mileage oh, okay. so we rest up and get ready for a big effort on that day. And as a freshman did the older people on the team help mentor you and how? Um, they definitely did. Uh, we have two captains, um, Carly and Kayla, who mm -hmm. have been like really good role models for all of us and how dedicated they are to the team. And really, like basically any of the older girls are mm -hmm. role models, like even ones who are just a year older, we still go to them for racing advice, advice with school, just anything we really need. 
All right, thanks for talking to us today, Maddie. That'll do it for our first segment, but when we get back, our analysts will talk to the, talk the NHL playoffs. Stay with us. Welcome back, and I'm joined by Matt Boker and Michael Batista, who will be discussing the, the race to the Stanley Cup for the first round. Each analyst will have the opportunity to answer two discuss discussion questions before we jump into our rapid fire segment. The first question is as follows. Which sound round matchup is the most intriguing and why? Matt, let's start with you. I think you have to go with the Capitals and Penguins. It's Crosby versus Ovechkin, the two most marketable stars in the league, the two biggest players in the league going head to head. You saw the Capitals won the President's Trophy this year, just running through the regular season. The Capitals, uh, probably the best team in the league this year. The Penguins were the hottest team in the second league, just ran through the Rangers in the first round. So you got two hot teams going at it. Um, so I mean, it's, it should be a great series. First of all, don't remind me about that <laughs> Penguins Rangers yeah. series, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> Secondly, you of all people should know that the President's Trophy winner hasn't won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> it's not a guarantee, and it doesn't happen all that time. And I should know that because of a uh, certain Stanley Cup, uh, a certain President's Trophy winner, uh, I think last year. So it's really not fun to be President's Trophy winner. Uh, honestly, my pick for the most intriguing right now has got to be Blues, uh, the uh, St. Louis Blues and the Dallas Stars, just because. Honestly, what did, the, what did the Blues go out and do? They went and beat the defending champions in the first round mm -hmm. in an amazing seven-game uh, series. And if, I'm a Chicago, and if I'm a Blues fan or a Chicago fan, I'm go that was like so intense. And how they barely won with just that last goal, that last puck not crossing, crossing the crease. Just I think this Blues team has got a lot to offer. And Dallas, Dallas has been strong all year. And they went through a pretty resilient, uh, mm -hmm. pr pretty resilient wild team with Parisi and uh, a bunch and all their captains and offense doing really well. So I'm expecting a really good turnout from those two. Okay, great first discussion, guys. Our second discussion question is: What is the secret to beating the Washington Capitals? Mike, you're up. I really wish I knew. Off, like I really wish I could say definitely, but I think that the secret is stop with the team play and just attack the net because a lot of teams that I watch, like my Rangers and your Flyers, they do the thing where it's just, okay, let's get all five of guys outside, pass, 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 shoot. That's not gonna work against the Capitals. What you need to do is you need to shoot many times and get the <laughs> rebounds and make sure their goalie and their defense is off kilter. You need to be able to get them when they're at their weakest and their least organized. And if you give them time to organize themselves, you're not gonna get that puck behind the net. It's just not gonna happen. I agree. I think the Capitals are probably the favorite to win the Cup. They're the best team, but they are beatable, I think. You saw in the Flyers series, they dominated the special teams play. On the penalty kill, I think they were like two, the Flyers had two goals and 25 chances or something, mm -hmm. and on the power play, they were just unstoppable. If you want to beat the Capitals, you have to stay out of the box, I think. Definitely. Great discussion, guys. Now it's time for our rapid fire segment. Each analyst will be asked two questions, to which they will have 30 seconds to answer. Matt, let's start with you. For your question, who is your favorite to win the Cup? I, I would have to go with the Capitals. I think they're just a complete team. They have the best goalie in the league this year. Braden Holpe is probably going to win the Vesna Trophy. He tied the record for most wins all time in a season. And they have four lines that they could roll in any time and could score, unlike most teams in the league. Mike, for your first question, the Capitals are the odds-on favorites in the East, but who is your, the favorite in the West? It's a difficult choice between the Blues and the Sharks, but I kind of think I'm going to have to go with the Sharks just because even though I just spoke so highly of the Blues, I feel like the Sharks are a team out for a vengeance because two years ago they collapsed against mm -hmm. the Kings and people that were just constant like, they should not, that should not have happened. Uh, and then the, I think last year they didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. They are just a team out to show that they deserve to be there. They have a strong offense like Joe Thornton and all their offense is just really good. I don't think if they had just gotten a few more breaks, they would be in second, not third. And there's a, but there's an advantage to being a third seed in the West. Okay, your time is up. <laughs> um, Matt, for your second question, which team that lost in the first round was the most underwhelming? I would have to go either the Blackhawks or the Kings. I would lean toward the Kings because the Blackhawks, they won the cup last year, but they lost a few key players due to contract issues and salary cap. So they were not really expected to go as far this year, but the Kings, I think, really rolled into the playoffs on a hot streak, and then they've handled the Sharks in the past three, four 
postseason, so I really expected them to easily beat the Sharks, and Mike was right, the Sharks are a team to beat in the West. Okay, Mike, for your final question, which has been the best series so far in the playoffs? Best series so far, and I said four, it's, it was Blue Chicago because those seven games were just amazing to watch. Mm -hmm. It was just back and forth of who's going to win, Blue's just going out, starting strong, and then Chicago somehow was pushing back, push about, pushing back, and then just getting to that game seven, and it's incredible ending. I just think that's like going to be the series to be in terms of excitement and quality. Okay, great. Uh, well, that does it for this episode of Sports Outlet. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, if you would like to join Lions Television, email us at ltv at tcnj.edu or like us on Facebook. For Matt Boker and Mike Batista, I'm Jess Gango. We'll see you next time.